So uh, th thanks for having me. My name's Crosser. I'm one of the trainers based in New South Wales. Um, I'm down here in Melbourne with Geraldine and we're running through a CoreLogic RP data presentation. Um, why you should be using the system, the different reports we're going to be covering, um, and then we'll talk about packaging at the end of the, uh, the demo as well. Should take us about an hour. Geraldine will, will discuss your packaging and your pricing at the end of the session. So there are lots of uh, different reports that we can run at different stages of purchasing property and that's what we're going to cover today. Um, so we'll be covering the different tools and reports which will help you um, build more loyal customers and win new business which is um, every, uh, you know, an part important part of every business and we've also got some really good retention tools as well. Um, we're going to cover the tools that will allow you to speak to your clients to help them position you as an expert. So being able to have all of this information at your fingertips makes you a suburb expert. Um, and then as I uh, uh, suggested at the end of the session, um, there will be a special offer and Geraldine will discuss that uh, with you guys at the end of the session. Um, now we're going to do a live demo now, so I'm going to switch across to the platform. Uh, you should be able to see my RP data homepage. Now the system is very, very easy. Uh, when we first log on to the platform, this is your landing page, your homepage. And at the top of your home page, you've got a search engine. I'm going to come back to that a little bit later on. What I really want to concentrate here is, is if we scroll down, we've got this activities widget. And on that activities widget, we've got a whole bunch of different types of reports we can run directly off our home page. Now, as I mentioned, there are different reports that we're going to run at different stages of, uh, for our clients when they're looking to purchase property. And the first thing is, is let's imagine the scenario where um, someone comes in and says, I'm thinking about buying in a specific suburb, but I don't really know too much about that particular suburb. So the first thing we're going to do is, is straight off our homepage under the activities widget, there is a suburb statistics report we can run. We'll click on the suburb stats report. Now what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to enter in a suburb. So we enter in a suburb. So I'm going to punch in my suburb, it would help if I could spell properly, there it is, Castle Hill, New South Wales, and we click search. So this is going to go off now and it's going to retrieve all of the suburb statistics that we have on our suburb of choice. Now whenever we're printing any sort of reporting in RP data, what we've got on the left hand side is a menu of our report, and these are all of the different components of my report. On the right hand side is my corresponding data. Now I can use my bar to scroll up and down to have a look at all of the information we have available on the report. But what I find easier is, is just by using the menu on the left hand side and it's almost like a quick find. You click on that component of the report and it shows me the corresponding information on the right hand side. Now this has got some really, really important information. We've got a cover page, We've got a suburb profile, schools, parks, populations. We've got recent median prices, sales per annum, sale by price, and then our change in median price. And then we've got some demographic information which is gathered from the Bureau of Stats and the Census. So we've got our household, our age sex ratio, and our household income as well. So this information is all about the suburb. Now, if if you're happy to print this report as is, we can go straight to generate PDF and we can PDF the report. However, when we're creating reports in RP data, we can customise these reports. So as an example, we can edit our cover page. So every section of our report has a edit button. So I'm going to click my edit cover page. Now I can rename the report. I can put who I'm creating the report for and I can put in some comments as well. Click save and that will now edit the cover page of my report. So you can see I've edited my cover page. So every section has an edit button and every section can be hidden and shown. So let's say we clicked on age sex ratio, we looked at it and went, you know what, I don't really want that in there. I've got the ability for hover my mouse over the menu on the left hand side to click my hide button. And what that will do is it will completely remove that panel of data as well. If anything is turned off, I can turn it back on by clicking show. 
So not only do I have the ability to edit my report by using these edit buttons, I've also got the ability to hide and show over here on the left hand side. So I've got full capability, let me just close my email, full capability here to customise my report. Now from there what we're going to do is, is we're going to generate our report as a PDF. Give it a few seconds while the report gets generated. And then we can save it, we can email it, we can print it, we can do whatever we want with it. Um, you know, you can email it directly to your client or if you, you know, you've got a face-to-face -face meeting, uh, you can take it with you as well. Now you'll notice that I've got my core logic branding on this report. What I will do is, is at the end of the session, I will show you how you can add your own branding and your own colours, etc. But you can see here I've renamed the report. Your branding will be in the top left hand corner. Your address details will be over here. And then we've got who we prepared the report for, the date it was prepared on, as well as our contact details. So they're your contact details. And any comments you've added will appear on your home page as well. Now if we continue to scroll down, we've got the rest of the report as well. So they can now take this report away, have a look at all of this information, and then make the decision of whether Castle Hill is an area, as an example, that they're interested in investing in. So this is the, this is the, uh, the initial stages of looking to purchase property. If you don't know too much about a suburb, you need to do your due diligence on the suburb. You need to look at your capital growth figures. You need to look at the type of people that live in the area. These are all the sorts of things that you are going to be able to get out of this report, which will assist them in making the next step, which is then looking to see what's on the market. Okay. So that's our first step in regards to property purchase. Someone comes to you, they've, you know, they've done no initial research, they want to look at a particular suburb, we can assist them by running a suburb statistics report. Now the second thing we're going to do is, is we're going to create a sales history report. And this will then allow them to have a look at what's been sold in the area, to have a look and see, you know, is it within my price range? You know, what am I getting for a three bedroom home in my suburb of interest as an example? So. First things first, we did a suburb stats report. The second thing is, is we've got the ability to create a sales history report. So we'll click on the sales history report. We enter in our suburb. I'm just going to stick with Castle Hill. Now when we run a sales history report, what the system will do is it will automatically put in a six month date range. So you can see down the bottom here, it's automatically gone back to the 5th of January, which is exactly six months ago. And what the system is telling me here in my view all button is that there have been 287 sales in the suburb of Castle Hill in the last six months. Now what we're going to do is we're going to refine our search. So we're going to be specific with our property type. So let's go houses. We're going to choose our bedrooms and our bathrooms. We can multi-select here. And we can put in land size as an example as well. Click refine, and that's narrowed it down to 61 sales. Maybe let's only go four bidders, so I might remove three bidders. 61 is a bit excessive. And we've got 44 houses sold in the last six months in the suburb of Castle Hill, which is a four bedroom, one or two bathroom, one or two car space with at least a 500 square meter block. So you've got the ability here to use this refine box to be very, very specific of what we want to pull out of the system. Now, your view all button is the total number of records that the system has found. You can then select the records that you want to include in your report by selecting them individually or by clicking select all. For the exercise, I'm just going to go select all. Now, once I've selected the properties that I want to include in my report, I click my next step button and from here, just like we did with our suburbs to sixes report, we've got the ability to edit our, edit our panels by using these edit buttons and we can hide and show as well. So you might want to edit the cover page, you might want to rename the report, you might want to put who you're creating the report for and you might want to put in some comments. So every report you create in RP data 
you will always get these edit buttons which allow you to make slight changes and you've got the ability to hide panels of data as well. Once you've gone through the process of editing, hiding, showing, etc., we've then got the ability to generate our report as a PDF file. Now, once again, this will have all your branding, your colors, your logos on it, etc. And we then now have a sales history report. So you can see I've renamed the report who I prepared it for, your contact details, your comments, and then you've got all of your comparables which we've selected. I think there was 44 of them. And then we would have some summary tables at the bottom as well. So you can see here we've got some summary tables. So we've got highest, um, high, uh, uh, highest lowest, median, uh, average, and total volume of sales as well. So all of these reports will be branded with your own branding. At the end of the session, I'll show you how you can brand your report as well. However, because I'm using my own login and password, everything's branded CoreLogic. Okay. Now, once they've looked at that sales history report, what they're then going to do is say, yep, Castle Hill is an area that I'm interested in investing in. And now they, what they're going to do is, is they're going to go off to realestate.com, domain, and other forms uh, whether it be a newspaper or a magazine, to find properties that are on the market. However, we as users of RP data have got the ability to create an on the market report as well. So we're adding value to what we can do as a broker. <coughs> so we have got on the home page an on the market report. So you can see all of my reports are coming directly off this activities tab, which makes it really, really easy to run. Let's run an on the market report. We click the on the market report, we punch in our suburb of choice, click search. Now what the system has done is, is it's gone off and it's found me every single property which has been listed in the last three months. So it's 133 properties that have been listed in the last three months in the suburb of Castle Hill where we haven't received a sale price come through yet. Now, once again, we can refine our search by picking our property type, our bedrooms, our bathrooms, our car space. We can put in a land size and we click refine. That's narrowed it down to 21 properties. Now, from here, we can select all of these or select the ones we want individually. I'm going to select all for the exercise. I'm going to click next step. And from here, just like we did with all of our other reports, we can edit our panels by using our edit buttons, and we can then generate our report as a PDF file. So we click the Generate PDF button, save it, open it up. You can then print this report, you can email it, but this is an on-the-market report. So here are all of my properties that are on the market. So we can now send them a report and say, you know what, I've found some properties that are on the market in your area of interest. You might want to have a look at these. They can then take this away and then get out there and get to some open homes, have a look at some auctions in the area, have a look at some of the statistics here as well. And they've now got an on the market report as well. Okay. Now, once they've had a look at that on the market report, what they're then going to do is, is they're probably going to start to go to open homes. So from there on the market report, they might pick you know five or six properties that they might want to go to an open home to. Now, if your clients are going to open homes, what we want to do is, is we want to create them these valuation reports. We call them AVMs. Now we all know that there's different types of evaluations we can run on a property. Bottom level we get automated vows, which is formula based. The next step up would be a desktop valuation which is human involvement plus data. We've then got curbsides, we've then got full internal. So there's lots of different types of valuations we can run on a property. But what you get as part of your RP data subscription are these automated vows. 
Now these are all used by the big banks, NAB, NAB Bank West, ANZ, St George, CBA is our biggest client and our biggest user and they apply these automated vows to their loan process as well. They do apply their own business rules to it as well, but all of our AVMs and our valuation tools are used by all the big banks as well. So what we do is, is we click the valuation report button and we punch in an address of a property. Now what this is going to do is it's going to ask me to confirm the bedrooms and bathrooms which I can change if they are incorrect. And I do so just by using the drop down arrow. Now we've got a quality of construction option here. You know, you can change it to better or we can go to much worse. So as an example, if you've got a property which has you know, got a brand new bathroom, brand new kitchen, um, or it's a knockdown and rebuild, or it's completely brand new, you might want to change your quality of construction to better. Um, you know, if the property's really run down, you know, uh, you know, it's got stained carpets, holes in the walls, and all sorts of damage to it, um, you might want to change the quality of construction to much worse. You can put in your living area size. You can put in your lot size, your last sale date and sale price, and the year was the year it was built. If you don't have this information, we don't have that on our database. As long as you've got that top third section complete, you can still run an AVM. Now down the bottom here, you've just got to pick one of these two options and it doesn't really matter which option we pick, they both do the same thing. Thank you. Click the get AVM button. Now as soon as we hit the I agree button, what the system is going to do is it's going to run about 17 different formulas in the background. It's going to give us a valuation, it's going to give us a price range and it's going to give us a confidence score as well. So let's click the I agree button. Let's just run in some formulas in the background now. Let's save it. Wait for it to download. And then we'll open it up and have a look at it. Okay. So the first page of my report is just a cover page. The second page comes up and it's giving me a valuation of just over 2 million. It's giving me a price range of 1.8 to 2.16 and it's giving me an FSD score of 8%. Now the FSD, which stands for Forecast Standard Deviation, this number does two things. First of all, it calculates the price range. So 8% on and off 2 mil gives me the bottom end and it also gives me the top end. So that's how the price range is calculated. We value the property at 2 mil, but it's got a minus or uh, minus and plus 8% on each end to give us the price range. Now the FSD is also a way of us to tell you how confident we are with the valuation we've given you. The lower the FSD, the higher our confidence is. So 8% is a pretty good confidence score. Anything in between 0 to 10% is a high confidence score. Anything from 11% FSD to 16% is medium and anything from 17 to 30 is low. Now how does the FSD get calculated? Well, the more we know about the property, the more turnover, the more comparable sales, the more properties are on the market with similar attributes and features, the more numbers we can feed through our formulas, the higher our confidence is, the lower the FSD, the tighter the price range will be as well. So we can't control the FSD, it's all automated on the comparable sales information that we're able to obtain around that property in question. So they can now take this report to their open home. They've got a bit of an idea of what we believe the property could be worth and what price range it will sit within. We give them some comparables that were used in the formula. So it gives them about five or six comparables. The system does use over a hundred in the formula to return you the result though. So this just gives you five or six uh, random ones that will pull from the formula and then it gives you a bit of a snapshot of the area as well. So it's a four to five, sometimes six page report that they can take with them. They've got some collateral, something they've got in their hand that they can take with them to their open homes. 
um, so they can then make the, the, the decision or not really make a decision but at least have a bit of an indication of what the property could be worth as they're walking through it. Now once they've then gone off to their open homes they are then probably going to come back to you and say, you know what, I had a look at five or six open homes, but there's one property in question that I really want to buy. I'm really interested, I really like it. So what we're able to do here is, is we are able to create a CMA report. So use the automated valuation reports at the open homes, but once they've narrowed it down to a property that they're really interested in, this is where we're going to go to the trouble of creating a CMA report. CMA stands for Comparative Market Analysis and, and what it is, is it is an amalgamation of all of our data so it's a very, very detailed and impressive looking report. We'll click the CMA button and we'll run the report. We punch in the address of our property and I'll just do the same property as what we just did. Now when we run a CMA what we get across the top here are these arrows and just imagine these arrows as a timeline. We're going to follow these arrows from left to right until we get to that final step which is generate PDF. Now the first part of my CMA is the select sold portion. Now when we do a CMA what the system does is it does a one kilometer radius and it does the last six months worth of sales. We can change that radius from half a K all the way up to 5K and if 5Ks isn't enough and you're working in a rural area, you can do total number of properties as well. But generally in a metro residential area, one kilometre will always be more than enough. Now down the bottom here we've got a six month date range, once again we can change that just by using our little calendar box and we can choose a different date. However. When it comes to comparable sales, most people don't want to go any further than six months. Now, just like we did with all of our, our other reports, we're going to specify what we want. So we're going to go houses, so three or four bedrooms, one or two bathrooms, one or two car spaces. I'm going to click refine. Citizens found me 22 sales. I'm going to select all of those sales. or I can individually tag the ones I want as well. Now you notice with the sales that some are in purple and some are in black. The ones that are in purple sometimes you'll get not disclosed on them and that's because the ones that are in purple are agents advice. So an agent has said yeah we sold that property but sometimes an agent will be asked by the vendor or the buyer to say you know what can you not disclose my price and that's fine the agent says to us, yeah, we sold that property but we can't give you the price. Just for your information, once that property settles, contracts are completed and sent to lands, titles or big government or whatever sort of institute you have in the state that provides official government records, we will always get a sale price regardless. So anything which is in purple hasn't settled yet and it just sits there for between 90 to 100 days whilst we're waiting for the, the contracts to settle. Once they settle we get the data, the purple information gets removed and it gets overridden by the settled record and it goes on in black and will always have a sale price. So you might want to just untick anything which hasn't got a price as an example. So you can work your way down your list and untick any of those not disclosed as an example. From there we then click the next step button in red and when we click next step what the system is going to do is it's just going to go from select sold to select on the market. So the first thing we did is, is we provided our client, our customer with what's been recently sold. The second thing we're going to do is show them what else is on the market. Now just like I did previously, we're going to refine. So we always do the same thing. Click the red refine button. It's only found me two sales. Let's maybe throw a couple of five bidders. Let's increase our radius. Not many sales within a K. Let's go out to two Ks. And it's now populated it up to seven. So your view all button tells you how many properties have matched your search. If you don't get enough, expand your radius. If you get too many, reduce your radius. When it comes to comparable sales, 
the closer the better. But I've had to just pull that out to 2Ks because there hasn't been many sales in the area. I'm then going to select all of those records and I'm going to click next step. Now when I click the next step button, what the system is doing is, is jumping from on the market to market compare. Now what market compare is, is market compare is a combination of both sold and on the market. So just like I did before, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to refine my search. You can see I'm keeping my attributes and features universal across all of the steps. I'm clicking my refine button. It's narrowed it down to 56. That's too many. We don't need to give them 56. Let's reduce it to a K. So I'm using this radius button to control the total number of comparables. It's found me 19. Now what this does is it tells me what a property was first listed for. So let's look at this one as an example, 12 Ravispan uh, circuit in Dural. First listed at 1.275, last listed at 1.275, spent 35, 34 days on the market, was eventually sold for 1.311. But if we have a look at this data, 25 days sold, 18 days sold, 34 days sold, 10 days sold, 35 days sold, 26 days sold. What's this telling me about Dural? It's a hot market. Properties are selling quickly. So this will give your client, your customer, the buyer, a really good indication and idea of how the market is performing in that particular area. So I know as a buyer that I need to act quickly in most cases when it comes to a house in Dural. So really, some really good insights here of how the market is performing. Are properties overpriced? Are they selling quickly? Are they having to be reduced before they're being sold? All of these questions can be answered by using this market compare data. So I'll select those records. I'm going to click next step. And we now get to the rental portion of our report. Now, if our client's looking to purchase property for investment purposes, they're looking to buy the property to rent it out, we would definitely include rental information. If it's for a first home buyer though, we may want to skip this step. But for the exercise, let's assume that our client's looking to buy the property for investment purposes. Now, just like we did previously, we're going to refine our search. So you can see each step, we're pretty much doing the same thing. We're clicking refine. It's going to narrow it down from 38 rentals to 19. You might want to decrease that from 1K to half a K. It's only found me two. Let's pop it up back to a K. And then select the comparables that you want to include in your report. And you click next step. Now once we past the rental step of our report, we are then going to get to the preview panel of our report. So each step we did the same thing. We refined, we selected, and then we clicked next step. And every time we click next step, it just jumps up my timeline at the top, moves from left to right, and we keep doing so until we get to the preview panel of our report. And when we get to the preview panel of our report, let me just apply this default template. What we've got is, is our data on the right hand side. Just like we did before, we can scroll up and down to view our data. And we've got a menu on the left hand side as well. Now the menu on the left hand side are all of the components of my report. And you can see that there are many, many components to a CMA report. It's very, very detailed. Now you'll notice that the first four are in grey and the fifth one down is in white. Then you've got a whole bunch of other ones that are in grey and then media maximizer is in white. Anything which is in grey, if I hover my mouse over it, it says the word hide. And what that means is, is that component of my report is shown as a default and if I want to remove it entirely, I can click hide. Anything which is in white is automatically hidden as a default and I can turn it on by clicking show. 
So all of these sections can either be hidden or shown as part of your CMA. It's up to you as the user on how you want to customise this report. You might want to show everything. You might want to have a very, very simplified report. It's up to you. Everyone's got the ability to edit this report the way they want it. Now, not only do we have these hide and show buttons, we've also got the edit buttons which we discussed earlier as well. So as an example, you might want to edit your cover page. Now, unfortunately in Dural, there are no beaches. That's where I live. So I'm not going to include a beach image on the cover page of my report. So what I can do is, let's change it to a rural image as an example. I can then change the colour of my branding for my report. Let's make it red for the exercise. You might want to rename the report as well. So just like we did with all of the other reports, we've got the ability to edit each page and each panel of data. So that's my cover page. Now the next section down is your professional agent. And if I click on that and I go edit panel, you guys aren't real estate agents. So just change the head to whatever you want. I'm going to put your professional broker. Now you're about me. You can talk about yourself here. You may already have a spill on your website um, or may, you might have something which is already written up. It can be up to a thousand characters. You can just do a copy and paste in here. Now my sales success is obviously an agent tool. So we can untick anything we don't require. So headings can be changed. Fields can be unticked that we don't require and content can be added. It's up to you how you want to customise this report. Click save. So as we're working our way down, we can either edit every panel or we can hide and show our panels. Now, what's really important here is, is if we look at recent median prices down to changing median prices, these sections which are about prices, if we click on them, and we go edit panel, you can see it's giving me house and unit stats. Now, our property that we're doing our CMA on is a house. So I'm going to untick the unit statistics and I'm just going to leave the house stats and I'm going to click save. So we've got the ability here to remove all the unit and land stats by clicking on these sections which are about prices, clicking the edit button on the right hand side and removing what we don't require. There's no point in giving our client a 20 page report and six pages about units and land and they're trying to buy a house or refinance their house or sell their house or whatever it is. So what we're going to do here is, is we're going to reduce this report, we're going to customise it and we're going to remove the statistics we don't require. Okay. Now once we've gone through that process, the final step of my report is suggested listing price. You guys aren't suggesting anything. You're not real estate agents, you're not valuers. Don't get bogged down into a conversation of saying, well, I think the property is worth or I think you should buy it or I think you should sell it or whatever it is. That's not your job. The whole point of this report is for them to be able to take all of this great information away so they can make their informed decisions quicker which means more money in your back pocket, back pocket quicker as well. So my advice here is just to hide the suggested listing price. So hide anything which is irrelevant, edit the report the way you want it. Now we've gone through, we've hidden the suggested listing price, we've uh, picked our cover page, we've added our about me, we've edited, hidden, shown everything the way we want it. What we can then do is we can save all of those changes as a template so we don't need to do them again. So we can go save template, save as, and we can give it a name. Now, we've removed all the unit and land stats, so let's call this house template um, XYZ broker. Call it whatever you want, but it's important 
that you understand what's in your report. So I've called it houses temp because it's only got house statistics in it. That makes sense to me as a user. I click save. Now what that is going to do now is it's going to save all of those changes as a template and I've given it a name. Now my advice would be from there is, is to go back down to these sections which are about prices, <coughs> click on each one, go to edit panel, untick house stats, tick unit stats for all of the sections which are about prices and then save a template and call it units and then create one for land as well. So we should have three templates as a minimum. One that's only got house stats, one that's only got land stats, one that's only got unit stats. You can then create other templates which have got you know a whole bunch of statistics together or no statistics altogether. It's up to you. You can create up to 10 templates. Now what does that mean? What that means is, is once we've created our templates, the next time we do a CMA, we've still got to go through these steps because every property will have different comparables. But when we get to the preview panel, all you need to do is go manage template, find the template you want. There's the one I called houses temp XYZ broker and I click the apply button. And once I click that apply button, all of those changes that were included as part of that template, i.e. the about me, the colors, the cover page, what I shown, what I turned on, what I removed, what I edited, etc., will be applied to that particular market appraisal within a couple of seconds. So really, really important that you understand that process. So we take our time, we set our templates up correctly, a bit of legwork up front. Might take you about 10 minutes per template, but it's gonna save you an enormous amount of work in the long run. Now once you've applied our template, we can then either generate our report as a PDF or as a Word doc. I'm gonna generate it as a PDF file for the exercise. We just wait while the report gets generated. Once again, this will all be branded, which I'll show you how to do in a couple of seconds. We can then save it, email it directly as an attachment, or we can open it up. And if you've got a nice color printer, these look great in color, you can take it to your next meeting. We'll just wait for, here is my report. So here's my cover page. You can see I've renamed the report at the top. I've picked a different cover page. I've picked my color. Talks about you as a professional broker. Talks about their property. We've got some maps. What's been sold recently. What's on the market. Market compare. And then your rental portion. So they're the four sections where we've gone in and we've selected all of our comparables. And then we've got all of our suburb profiles, suburb statistics information as well. So you can see once this report comes together with your branding, your logos, your colors, and all of your content, content is completed, it looks great, it looks professional, and it looks like you spent hours and hours putting this report together. Everyone loves to read about property these days. And you give them this report and it's everything they need to take away, have a look at the property of interest, have a look at the surrounding sales, have a look to see what's going on in the suburb, make their own decision a lot quicker. And it literally took you five minutes. So I know like it seems like a bit of work at the moment, that's because you've seen it for the first time. But like I said, once you've got those templates created, this report should take you just a couple of minutes to create. And that's what you want. You want to be able to put together a nice professional looking report that you can put together within a couple of minutes, you can give to your client once they've decided to uh, make a bid on a particular property. Now you can see how we've used different reports at different stages of purchasing property. We started at the very beginning where a client's come to us and said, I'm thinking about buying in a particular suburb. 
great, let me shoot you a suburb statistics report. If someone comes to you and says, uh, I found a specific property of interest and I really want to buy it, well, we wouldn't bother with any of those earlier reports, we would go straight to the CMA report. If someone says to you, um, I know I want to buy in um, Manly Suburb and I want to buy a unit, great, go and create them an on the market report, let's help them find properties that are on the market. If they already found properties on the market and they're going to a couple of open homes on the weekend, we start at the valuation report stage. So not every client is going to repeat, is going to re uh, receive all of these reports. It's depending on the stage they approach you on how we're going to assist them in using this particular report for that stage. Now, the final step is once they've purchased the property, we can punch in an address. So let's say, let's say they purchased 80 Jenner Road. Bear with me, I don't know what's happened to my internet connection. Here it is, it's come back up. So this is the individual property screen. We're going to scroll down and we've got this add to my watch list button. Binoculars with a little plus symbol on it. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to click the add to my watch list button. And when I click it, it's going to change to remove from my watch list. So when we add a property to our watch list, what that means is, is we're now monitoring this property for activity. So if this property was to be ever listed for sale, for rent, or was to be sold, we will get an email alert. So I'll just repeat that. When you add a property to your watch list, you will be alerted if that property gets listed for sale, for rent, or gets sold. So this is a really, really important tool. It is a great retention tool. And we send you all of the alerts. So what you're able to do is in the initial stages when you sign up is you can send us a bulk upload, a list of all your addresses in an Excel spreadsheet. We go and tag all of them for you. And then we say, yep, yeah, out of the 500 you gave us, 480 matched. Here's a list of anything which didn't match, so then you can manually go and find it yourself. But as add you write new loans and you make new contact and you meet new people, that's how you would do it. Is you would bring up the address and you would click the add to my watch list button. So that would be the final step in reference to the stage of purchasing a property. From the very beginning of running their initial suburb research, all the way to them purchasing a property and then adding the property to your watch list. So you can then be monitored and alert, you can be alerted and you can monitor their properties um, and be proactive when they list their property for sale. Now when we bring up a property address, such as this one here, we've got this mapping system over here on the right hand side. We'll click the map button. When I click map, it's going to load up my mapping system. Let me just give it a few seconds. I might come back to that mapping system. We might just have a look at something else. It could be my internet connection here is playing up on my 4G, so. Let me just go back to the home page and I'll just show you some, um, we'll come back to that mapping system, but I really want to show you some prospecting tools on how we can find people um, who we can contact, who could be in a position to refinance or high equity. So we've got some really good marketing and prospect tools. Okay, here we go. So when we go back to the home page, if we run a search, it could be a suburb, a postcard, or it could be a street. Let's do the suburb. What we've got over here is, is this finance cycle. And if I click on the finance button, on the left hand side, in the refine box, I've got this finance cycle little drop down menu. And if I click on that, what we can do is say, okay, how many people could be in a position to refinance? Click refine. 
And what the system is telling me is, is for the suburb of Castle Hill, we believe there are 1,659 people or property addresses who could be in a position to refinance. Now, it's not that we know the health of their mortgage, but what we do know is, is they're purchasing between two and four years. And if they're on top of their mortgage and they've been paying principal plus interest, they should be in a position to refinance. So here's my list. Now, there's a couple of different things I can do with this list. I can select all of these records. I can switch across to the contacts tab. And what I can then do is, is I can use the contacts tab to call anyone who has got a phone number in black. Okay, here's all of my phone numbers. What we can also do is we can switch across to the property tab. We can go to the selected portion. <coughs> and we can export this data into an Excel spreadsheet. And what I can then do is send these people a, um, it could be a flyer, it could be a letter. We'll just wait for this to save the Excel spreadsheet, 1600 records, so I should, probably should have minimised that to a smaller amount, but here it is. And here's all of my addresses of the people who are in a position to refinance. I can then import that into Microsoft Word. I can send a letter out to the homeowner, whatever it is, and we can do a clear face envelope or a label or something along those lines as well. So I've got the ability here to run a finance cycle by going to my finance tab. I just did a refinance, but what I can do is, is I can do high equity, which is six and a half to eight years ownership. I can click refine and then I can do the same thing as what I did before. I can select all of those records, I can switch across the contacts, go to my selected portion and I can contact those people with black numbers. Red is do not call and that basically means you can't telemarket to them. So I'm not saying you can't call red numbers but you can't telemarket or I can switch across to the property tab go to my selected portion and I can export those addresses into an Excel spreadsheet so I can then send them a letter, a flyer, a brochure, whatever it is and I've got all of those addresses as well. So we've got some really handy prospecting and marketing tools and some filters you can apply to then give you a nice list of people we can prospect to. So here's all of my high equity people. Okay. All right, so let's finish up with that mapping system. I'll go back to the mapping system. Hopefully, that's, there we go. That's better. I'm not sure what happened earlier. So when we bring up a property address, Top right hand corner here we've got this map button and when we bring up our map our property in question has got a yellow box around it and we've got a menu on the left hand side and we've got a menu on the right hand side. Let's start with the menu on the left hand side. So I've got three types of views I can work with. I've got a Google aerial image, I've got some secondary aerial images we can work with and then I've got a road image which is no aerial image at all. So there's three types of overlays we can work with when we're using our mapping system. The default though is the Google aerial image. I can zoom in to get closer. I can zoom out to come further out. I can drag my map in whatever direction I like and when I do so it will populate the aerial map over the grey section. So essentially what I'm able to do here is, is go for a virtual walk in whatever direction I like to have a look at the surrounding properties. Now if you go for a bit of a walk you can send to your property back in the middle of the page by clicking home. Now what a lot, a lot of people love to do is, if I zoom out a little bit, is to switch across to this menu on the right hand side. And what I'm able to do is, is go to map layers. 
I can go to sales themes and I can say give me everything which has been sold in the last zero to six months and it highlights them in a dark red. Six to twelve months in purple, twelve to twenty-four in a light red, twenty-four to thirty-six in orange. I can then do the same thing for my listings. I can go for sale in blue and then I can go for rent in green. So I can now zoom out here and I can see all of the activity which is occurring in this particular map, in this particular area. And I can show it to my client and say, look, here's your property in the middle of the page. Well, this is what's been recently sold. This is what's currently on the market. So we can visually see what's going on in an area by using our mapping system. Okay. I can also measure tools as well. So I've got a measure distance button here. What I can do here is, is I can click once and I can start to draw. Now when I want to change direction, I click once. Double click to end, 766 metres, plus the individual increments as well. So you might want to say, look, you know, your property is, you know, it's only about a 700 metre walk to, um, you know, the beach or the ocean or the local shopping centre or whatever it is. So we've got some measuring tools as well. If you make a mistake, you can just remove that information from the page. Now there's, in, there's an information button here, which will give you a map legend, a key, so you know what all the colours and symbols mean. And then you can download this image as well. So if you want to print it, email it, add it to a presentation or document, we can click the download button and that will allow me to download that image as a JPEG and then you can do whatever you want with it. Okay, so once we save it, we can open it up, we can print it, we can do whatever. Okay. Now, whilst you're on the mapping system, if there's any properties on there that you want to find out more information on, you click the hand, you can click on any property on the screen, let's say this one here, little pop-up page opens up with some basic information, and then from there we click view detail, and that will then load up that record on a new page. So if you, you've got the ability on your map to do further research as well. Okay, so that concludes our training. I'm just going to show you how you can upload your branding and create your own uh, logos and colours. So when you get your account, you go at the top to the right hand side, you go to my account. And I'm just going to switch across to another account to show you how to do that. Just bear with me. So we go my account, top right. We then go manage branding on the left hand side. And what you will see is, is you will have this RP data default template. You can't delete it, you can't change it, but you can add a new report theme. So we go add a new report theme. Give it a name. you then pick your colours here. So as an example, if you want the text in black, you could click blue and you could pick a colour. So we can use this chart here, but the easiest way is if you know the RGB of your colours, which you should have from your printer, you can type in your RGB when it give you an exact match. So I've got the ability here to change the colours on my report. So as an example, I'm going to pick a whole bunch of colours and I'm going to click save. Now once we've saved our colours, there's a choose button here which allows us to browse and upload our logo as well. So you've uploaded your logo, you've specified your colours. You can see I've picked a pretty horrendous colour combination here, but if I pick those colours and click save and I go back to my home page and I run one of those reports that we run. Let's run a suburb statistics report and I regenerate the PDF. You'll see that those colours will then be applied to my report. So you set your colours up, you upload your logo, you make it your active template and what that means is, is when you generate your report as a PDF, your branding and those colours you've selected will be part of the report. So just give it a few seconds while it creates this report for us. Now I didn't upload a logo, so it's just using the core logic one, but you'll see that those colours that I picked will be applied to my report. 
and there it is. Looks pretty ugly, but you get the drift. Okay. So that's how we would upload our colours and logos. They're the different types of reports we can run at different stages of purchasing property. You can see we can use this system for retention, we can brand, we can find new business. Um, with RP data we have ongoing training. So at the top, if you go up the top to help, we've got some PDF guides, we've got videos, we've got frequently asked questions, we've got a customer care team you can contact 12 hours a day and we've got various different types of methods in every, uh, different types of training methods in every state as well. So you're never on your own in RP data. There's plenty of notes and videos available, plenty of training if you need it. But like anything, once you receive your login and password, you need to get your hands dirty and play around with the system and you'll pick things up very, very quickly. So if we've got no specific questions, I'm just going to put Geraldine on and she's going to discuss a few other uh, uh, items before we uh, close the session off. Thank you, Costa, for this great demonstration. Um, it is a really amazing tool. So, um, quickly, so I'm Geraldine, Marketing Manager at Connective. Um, quickly, I wanted to talk about the offer for you guys. Uh, so, really simple offer and exclusive to Connective members. Uh, it will be $95 plus GST per month, um, and that is with national data, um, and we link and access for one person. If you want any additional users, it will be $20 plus GST per month. And this will be in a 12-month contract.